praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He made the difference. He makes the difference. He'll be your difference. And we thank the Lord for that opportunity here this evening. Praise the Lord. If you would stand, we're going to ask Pastor to come and preach the Word of God to us. And as I customarily do, let's pray for our pastor here tonight. Gracious Heavenly Father, we love you and we thank you for the word you're about to deliver to us. And we pray, Lord, for the anointing upon our pastor. In the name of Jesus, we ask. Amen. Praise the Lord. Ain't he wonderful tonight? It's glad, it's glad God made a difference in your life. It's God that does it. It's God that does it. Paul said, I planted Apollo's water, but God gave the increase. Hallelujah. This is all about Him. This is not about you. It's not about me. It's not about our organization. It's all about Jesus Christ. If Jesus ain't the center of it, we're out of the will of God. I don't know nothing else to say. Jesus not, is not the center. Well, it's great. Great. Thank y'all for that song. I wanted to hear that song. That, 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 that song. You. It's done something for me. I can just see myself. Yes, sir. I can see myself. I, you don't know where I came from. She does. Come on, yes. But I know where I came from. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I know all about me. Yes. I know the dirt bag I was. All right. I, I know how hard I must have been for her to have to live with. I know that. Ray, her, her being raised uh, around an alcoholic dad. Come on. A lot of problems with that situation. And then me turning out to be a jerk and drinking carrying on she made her mind up my kids will not be raised in an alcoholic home yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. I didn't have enough sense to know that she had had said that but God made the difference yes, God turned my life around yes, he made the difference in me praise the Lord well I'm not perfect but I'm a whole heap further than I was when I started yes, for over 40 years ago book of John chapter 1 now, I'm not going to preach over 15 or 20 minutes. If you'll help me. If you don't help me, it can get really long. <laughs> I, mean, I can just drag it out. You know? uh, on, on, man, on. <laughs> but I know you're going to help me. Yes, Praise the Lord. Beautiful, beautiful service this morning. What an awesome yes, service. Sister yes, Preacher done such a great job preaching the Word of God. Praise the Lord. Now, the Word of God is quick, powerful, and sharp. Now, that's not what I'm reading. I'm quoting. I see my wife looking at that. Ain't <laughs> <laughs> then any two edged so piercing the dividing of sunder of soul and spirit, joints and mind. And as a discerner of the thought and the intent of the heart, don't you worry about God. He knows where you're at. Amen. He knows everything about us. Praise the Lord. Philip found up Nathaniel and said unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip said unto him, Come and see. <coughs> Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no God. Nathanael said unto him, Which knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou was under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathaniel, now he's getting his attention. Now he, he's got his attention now. Nathaniel uh, said unto him, Which comest, which knowest thou? And he said, Before Philip called thee, when thou was under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathaniel answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. And Jesus said unto him, Because I saith unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree. Believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. Just a short message here tonight. Jesus. I like this preaching about Jesus. Amen. I've tried, I've tried to thank you. I I've tried to, to rearrange my very uh, thoughts of my sermon. I've tried to, I've tried to place Jesus. I've always tried to do that, but I'm trying to lie harder now. to place Jesus at the forefront of everything I say in this book. I'm going to preach just a minute on Jesus is adequate. Lay your Bibles down. Say me a course if you would. Praise the Lord. Jesus, we love you Lord. Lord. Lord, we adore you tonight. 
we adore you and Lord bless you. Lord, the Lord. Lord, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. We adore you. Would you lift your hands to it? Lord, we adore you. We magnify you, Lord. Hallelujah. We lift you up, Jesus. We lift you up, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. Be seated. Jesus is added. Jesus is all we need. Jesus has got our every answer that we need. Jesus already is in our tomorrow. He's already there. He's waiting on you and me. I read where a scientist conducted an experiment with a freshwater pipe. They fed that pipe nothing but minerals for weeks and weeks. And uh, got him programmed for, for, for minerals. And then they, take, they took the minerals away from him and put regular feed in his, in his uh, uh, glass pen, I call it. What do you want to call it? What do you call it? Aquarium. And, uh, and, and the, the story said that the pipe uh, starved to death with food inches from him. They had him so programmed. <laughs> Society, the way I see and understand society has tried to condition us the same way. It's tried to convince us and project an image of success that only happens with, as we do it ourselves. And that, there's, that there's, it's all about us. That's what society has uh, tried to condition us with, the world with us. And then when problems come, with that situation, the big thing is when problems come and things that they need, uh, and the thing of it is that, that we try to solve these problems by ourselves rather than calling on the one that has all the answers. And so literally we do as the pipe did. We starve the dead spiritually with the Lord right in front of us with plenty of food, spiritual food, right in front of us. That's what society, society doesn't really have a problem with religion. It really doesn't have a problem with preachers per se. But I'm going to tell you where society has their problem is when you get, start getting close to God and start letting God control your life. Then the society doesn't care for that kind of lifestyle. And religiously people have been conditioned to think that they're self-made. They can take care of their own problems and do their own thing. In reality, people today, I'm talking about church people, are starving to death spiritually and food right sitting right in front of them with the power of God moving in every service with the power of God like God like this morning when the power of God moved so strong this morning still yet there were some that did not receive what they should have received from God literally starving to death for a move of God when it's sitting right in front of them Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, somebody say praise the Lord, praise praise the Lord. Lord. when I say when I sleep okay so I say, I'm going to wake up if I am I'm going I'm to get up you got to remember what I started off saying. Jesus is aware of everything about us. He's aware of what my needs are. He's aware of what my situation is. Philip went to Nathaniel to tell him about Jesus. Nathaniel was surprised by Jesus greeting and asking uh, Jesus how he knew him. How, how did you know me? When Jesus said, said I, that, that he had known him, Jesus said that he saw Nathaniel sitting under the fig tree before Philip went, went, and, went after him. And literally what he's saying is, 
this. He believed that Jesus was already aware of what was happening in his life. Let me tell somebody in this service tonight that Jesus Christ is already aware of what's going on in your life. He's already aware of the problems that you have, the situations in your family, the situations with your children, the situations with your spouse. He's already aware of everything and he knows the need and he's adequate to take care of that situation within himself. He doesn't need any help. He doesn't need a, he doesn't need a boost. All he needs is somebody to say, Lord, here I am, take and use me. If I'm not doing okay, I'll just quit. No, no. Oh, no. I just, I'll, I'll be back up on me. Jesus <laughs> knew right where he was. And did you know that he knows tonight right where we are? You remember that woman? What was, I can't, that Bible didn't call her, uh, it didn't give her a name. It just said a woman of Samaria. It only told where she was from. Remember it's in John, uh, Jesus and his disciples stopped at a well called Jacob's well. And remember the story of how that Jesus told the disciples to go on into town and buy some food uh, for everybody and, and then come on back and he waited at the well. Did you ever, did you know, now I'm, I'm not, I'm not a, a real smart, but I, I've talked to smart people. Uh, did you know the best I could figure out these smart people that told me that the line from Jerusalem to where Christ was going, the road did not go through Samaria. They went, I'm not contradicting the word now. But Jesus had made a statement, I must needs go through Samaria. Well, if the road didn't go through Samaria, why would Jesus have to go through Samaria? Did you ask that question, yourself that question? Let me tell you why. Because he already knew the woman of Samaria where she was going to be sitting. He said, I must need to go. He didn't say, I got to go that way because the road goes that way. He said, I must need to go through Samaria. He had to go to where that woman was because that woman was in need of a move of God in her life. He already knew, Brother Jim, where that woman was. And that's why he sent all them disciples to town to buy groceries, to come back to get from, from them to have a lunch. He sent them away, and all of a sudden, guess who comes down the road with watering pots up to that well called Jacob's Well and walked up there and reached down to start to lower a pot down into the well. And Jesus said, Give me the drink. Yeah. And, and, uh, and she said, Lord, or said, How is it thou being, uh, I believe that was what you touched on a little bit, how is it thou being a Jew? Ask of me, a woman of Samaria, for a drink, for the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritan. Did you know that Jesus didn't need her and her water pots to get a drink of water? And when he said, I am the living water that came down from heaven, Jesus don't need you. He don't need me. He don't need this church. He don't need the United Pentecostal organization. What Jesus needs is somebody here tonight that's willing to reach up and say, God, I got a need in my life. You already know about it, Lord. You already got it all together. You got it together in your heart, in hell, and I need a move of God. That's all you need. So, he said, well, he goes through the, uh, the uh, ordeal there that my brother Mark was talking about. And she said, I know that uh, Messiah's coming. And, uh -huh. and said, when he comes, said, uh, you say that Jerusalem is a place to worship. So long. I can't, I can't quote it all. But anyway, I'm getting close. Yeah. And he said, she said, I know Messiah's coming. And said, and when he comes, said he's going to tell us all things. Jesus said, I asked Brother Jim a while ago, but I said, can you imagine how she felt? Yeah, all right. 
how she must have felt, brother. An outcast. Yeah. Not even part of the, the Abraham covenant. Can you imagine how she must have felt when he said, woman, he that speaketh to thee, I'm he. Can you imagine how that must have gripped her heart? Oh, it gripped her heart so bad, so strong. The Bible said, well, I'm going to not throw that down there because it's got chewing gum. <laughs> she dropped her water pots. Right, right. She just put them down and went in the town. Well, of course, it, it, before that, Christ said, go get your husband. And she's single. She's not married. I don't even think she's with her. He, she said, I don't have a husband. He said, true enough. But she's had five. Yeah. Said the one you got now is not your husband. Yeah. Now he didn't say this, but I, I, I think this is what it was all about. I think she was just living with this old dude. He, he was like some of them old dudes that don't want to take the responsibility. Yeah. You know. They want the milk, they don't want to buy the cow. Uh -huh. Come on, you might as well be honest. I'm right. Yeah. I, I'm a husband. Yeah, they got through some of them or something. <laughs> Go call your husband. She said, I don't have a husband. He said, you rightly said. And all of a sudden, she throws those watering pots down, Brother Jim, and runs to town and hollers at everybody to come and see a man that told me all things I've ever done. Is this not the Christ? Did you know that the Bible teaches us that he already knew that woman was going to get that well? That's what, that's what just makes me think, Lord, you're so awesome. Yeah. You already knew all about that woman. The disciples was there when they returned, found him talking to this woman, and found all this going on. I wonder what they must have thought. Jesus knew all about that woman. He knew she didn't have a husband. He knew she had had five husbands. He knew that the man she was living with was not her husband. He knew everything about her. He could have told her... He, he could have just told her anything that, that he so desired to. He already had everything already lined up, already uh, in control of this woman. And, and, uh, and that's the way God is with you and me tonight. God has got everything. God knows everything about me. He knows everything that I'm going to face tomorrow. He knows everything that I face next week. Uh, I was sitting in the office tonight and, or this afternoon and, and I got to having some pains. And boy, you do that when you get seven. And I hate it. But this pain got my attention. It was in my chest. And it was a sharp pain. Like he was putting a knife in me. And I said, now look at him. You know, and, and I said, oh, not me, you know. Went working on my notes. And, and this pain wouldn't leave me alone. And he just kept on hitting me in my chest. And I thought, well, you know, I might ought to call Sister Creasy. I might ought to get me a, a go get me a check out here this afternoon. And, and then it dawned on me, I was hearing what the old bishop said. I said unto this old bishop was gray headed and meaner than a junkyard dog and, and, and just as dogmatic man as they come. He would always say, I may die before I get to that pulpit. But if I don't die before I go to that pulpit, I'm going to the pulpit. Right, and I told myself, the message I'm preaching right now, I preached it to me, that God already knew where I was at. Yeah. That God may kill, I may die before I get through with this sermon. I, that that might have been my heart. I don't think it was. I'm going to tell you what I'm thankful. I think it was in four fried eggs I ate. <laughs> <laughs> and all that hell, I hate it. I think that's what it was. I don't think it had nothing to do with my ticket. I think it had everything to do with my digestive system. <laughs> but if I die before I get out of this pulpit tonight, God, well, you did cook me four eggs. God has already got everything in my life planned out. Is anybody here what I'm saying? God already knows all about me. Kind of like that old patriarch Job. God already had his life already planned out. You see, all this stuff that happened to Job, Brother Jim, did not take God off, off guard. It didn't take him by surprise. God already, God is already in our tomorrow. He already knows all about you. Let me read you something. Behold, I go forward 
when Job searched for an answer. I'm preaching to people here tonight that have searched for answers yes, sir. and haven't found them. Right, sir. Right. Have searched and prayed for answers that prayers did not did not get answered. Ever, anybody ever been there? Oh, I'm preaching to you tonight. Yeah. And all you didn't raise your hand, I'm preaching to you too. Yes, Job yes, searched for answers, Sister Chrissy, for God and he looked everywhere for God. He couldn't find it. Right, yeah. You ever prayed when you couldn't? Felt like your prayer didn't go to the ceiling? Yes, sir. You ever prayed when you felt that everything but victory? Yes, sir. When you got up off your knees to go do whatever it is you have to do for the day or for the night or whatever, you feel just as defeated as you did when you knelt down on your knees. Anybody ever been there besides me? Yes. And the Bible said Job searched for God and searched for an answer, Brother Jim, and couldn't find it. I'm going to read it to you. It's in the Word of God. If I get Brother Michael sticking up around that screen found in Job chapter 23, verse 8 and 9 and 10. Behold, I go forward, but he's not there, and backward, but I cannot perceive him. Oh, uh, on the left hand where he doth work, but I cannot behold him. He had of himself on the right hand that I cannot see him, but he knoweth the way that I take. I might not can see him. Are you hearing me? I might not can feel him. I might not can find him. When I pray, I might not feel him. I might not recognize him. When I preach, I might, they, I might just be preaching to a wall, but I'm going to tell you, he's there. He knoweth, verse 10, he knoweth the way that I take. And when he had tried me, is anybody ready? I shall come forth as gold. You know why Job can say that, Brother Jim? Because Job recognized that God already had everything under control in his life. You know why I can stand here and preach to you tonight when I don't feel good? I told my wife, I said, I'm not feeling well in my body. I don't feel good. But you know why I can stand here? Because God has already got everything in control and everything in my life is already preordained of God and I'm going to all. Oh, somebody help me please. Job said, when I don't know where God is, I like my friend, Bishop Tenney, T.F. Tenney. He's a character. He's a character. Smart. Awesome. He told me, when you can't track him, you trust him. That's where I'm at tonight, and that's where many of you are tonight. You can't track him, you trust him. Job said, when I don't know where God is, he knows where I am. When I don't know where God's at, and I don't know what God's up to, and I don't know what God is going to do, God knows where I'm at, and He knows what I'm up to, and He knows what I'm going to do. Are you understanding? When I can't find Him, He knows where I'm at. When I can't locate Him, when I can't feel His presence like I want to, God already knows where I'm at. Jesus is available. There is a great truth here. God does not play hide and seek on us. God knows where we're at. Did I tell you the story? I probably did, but I think it fits so good right here. I hadn't even got it broken down or nothing like that. I'm just going to shoot from the hill. I was working back here one day. This has been 100 years ago. Brother Stanley was back when the old baptistry was back behind that wall now. And that between that, remember that hallway back there? Okay, that floor back there was wood at one time. And uh, Leon Cross and, 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 uh, the other one, what's his name? Uh, who? Yeah, one of them. Leon and somebody. Uh, Buck, yeah, Buck. Poured the concrete. But I got in there and tore that floor out. And it was the middle of about June, July, hot. Man, it was so hot. And I was sweating. And I, you know, you, I had to smile for you to find me. I was so nasty. And my clothes was nasty. I was crawling around back here on that ground, getting that old rotten wood that had been eaten up with termites. I got all that cleaned out. I pitched it out that old door back there in the back. That was back there on that back, back far corner. And had it piled up back there. And, 
And when I got all of it done, I got out there and I loaded on my old truck and I went to Brighton, headed to the dump. And man, I was, I was picking low cotton spiritually. I felt bad and, and I felt bad spiritually and, and I wasn't having no move of God in the church. Uh, Baptistry head was full of spider webs and, and everything was going on and I wasn't seeing no results and preached my heart out and nothing happened and I was so discouraged that it was long about the time I was wanting to quit and, and Lord I quit a hundred times already and come back and and, uh, and I said to my I got in that old truck and I headed down the highway brother Stanley and, and, and I backed down there you know how you back down at the dump I backed way back there where I could get up and, and, and throw that old wood off and I crawled up on that old truck and sat down on the on the ta on the on the running board thing there and I was picking one board up at a time Pitching out, man, I was I was low spiritually, man. And here come a Tipton County truck, dump truck, and he loaded with old garbage, not garbage, but wood and stuff like that. And he backed right beside my truck. And he got out this old black man. Yeah. He walked over to my truck and leaned over on my truck and said, You're a preacher, ain't you? I said to myself, How in the world did you think of that? <laughs> man. I said, he must go to a Pentecost church. He said, you're a preacher, ain't you? And I said, yes, sir, I am. He said, God sent me to tell you something. Come on, right. And then he got my attention. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. He said, God sent me. He, this man don't know me. Right. And I look like everything, but man, I look like closer to a bootlegger than I did a preacher. <laughs> I, look, I, I wouldn't say you're like a preacher. I look like I've been in, in the field all day. Right. He said, God sent me to tell you he knows where you're at yeah. and everything is going yeah. to be all right. Yeah. He did. I just sat there and looked at him and I didn't know what to say. He said, do you need any help unloading this truck? I said, no, sir. Never said another word. He got in his truck. He dumped, hit that dumb thing on that truck, dumped that bed, Shut that bed down. He never said another word. I never said another word. I just looked at him. He got in that truck and drove off. And, 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 and I, I dare say this, but I would not have been afraid to have bet you just about anything when that truck got down the road it disappeared. Because yeah. Yeah. I believe I entertained an angel yeah. that day. That day. Yeah. A friend of mine, Brother Terry Black, mom, his, her dad passed away. He was a pastor and they lived out in California. They pastored a church out there for years. They lived in a parsonage. They done got old. He passed away. And Mama didn't have nowhere to go. The parsonage was going to have to be vacated for the next pastor. She had nowhere to go. She didn't know what she was going to do. Brother Terry Black got on the plane out here in Memphis and flew out there to see about his mother. Got out there and was visiting with her. Got up early one morning. And he was trying to comfort her. Got up early that morning. It was foggy. And they walked out to the ocean side. And there was a pier that went out into the water. And it was fog. You couldn't even see it. And Brother Black said they started walking out on that pier just talking. He was holding his mother's hand. And they was walking. And said when he seen something coming from out there. This, <coughs> and said it was a black gentleman. Had on a, a three-piece suit. And one of a real nice hat and a cane. Draped over his arm. So just a perfect gentleman. Walked up that pier, walked up to, to him, and said, didn't even touch, talk, say nothing to him, walked straight to his mother and stuck his hand out and said, Praise the Lord, sister. Yeah. And said, She just said, Praise the Lord. And he said, God sent me to you today. And said, Told me to tell you, Oh, this is going to get better, y'all. Told me to tell you that he knows where you're at and everything is going to be all right. Brother Black said he's standing there crying like a baby and said that gentleman turned around and walked back out into that fog, back out over that pier and said they stood there a minute and walked out there after him and he got out there and he ain't there. Yeah. Yeah. I don't believe he jumped in though. God sent me this service tonight to tell somebody that he knows right where you're at. He's got everything in control. He's got control of your life. He's got control of every circumstance in your life. Jimmy Crumb, until God says it's over, what's on? It ain't over. Until God says it's over, it ain't over. I read where the Bible said, Job said, I know, he knows the way, but he knows the way that I take. 
when I am tried, I shall come forth as gold. Job said, God already knows where I'm at. When I don't know where he's at, he knows where I'm at. Is anybody hearing me tonight? When I don't know where God's at, God knows where I'm at. In Jesus' name. Jesus is available in this service tonight for somebody. Jesus is here. Jesus is here. Teaching them that denying, uh, teaching them that to observe all things whatsoever I command you. And lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. Hebrews 13 and 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with which things you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Yes. Jesus is here tonight and he'll never leave us. Amen. He's awesome. He's adequate. He's available. All you got to do is call on him. Nathaniel was surprised when Jesus greeted him as the man that sat under the tree. He wanted to know how he knew me before he got here when I was under the tree. All right. Don't you know that tells you that Jesus was God Almighty as he walked the face of this earth. I'm about, I'm about to. The Bible said, John 20 and 31, but these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. This, this is evident right here that God gives life because or Jesus gives life because he's God Almighty in any situation. He's adequate to my need, whatever it is I need, if it's my finances, if it's my health, whatever, if it's my family, if it's the church, God is able. Preaching to somebody. He was God in flesh. The word was made flesh. And dwelt among us. We beheld his glory. The glory is the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. He's the miracle worker. He works miracles. He's, he uh, turned the water into wine. That's, that's our God. He's a miracle worker. He's the teacher of teachers. He, he, he's the includer. Those that, he includes those that are cast out. He's the healer of all kinds of infirmity. He's the multiplier of bread and fishes to feed thousands. He's adequate. He's sufficient. He can do anything and everything. He satisfies the thirsty of the soul, the thirst of the soul of man. He's the light of the world. He's the giver of sight to the blind. He's the good shepherd who gave his life for the sheep. He's the resurrection of the life. He is the king triumphant entering into Jerusalem on the coat of a donkey. He established a new covenant at the last supper he is the way the truth and the life he's divine and we are the branches he's adequate he's sufficient he's God almighty he's here tonight to supply your needs and that ain't all he is. I'm going to read just a few more things he is and I'm going to baptize me somebody he's the comforter who, lead, who leads us into all the truth he is the intercessor for the church he is the tortured whipping post of whom strike we are healed. He's the sacrifice that takes away the sin of the world. He's the first fruit of the resurrection. He's the restorer of the fallen disciple. Whatever you need from Jesus tonight, he's adequate. He's got everything under control. He's the great I am. Now that I speak in no respect of want. The apostle reading or writing Philippians 4 11. For I have learned in whatsoever state I am therein to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abandon. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Then he said, I can do all things through Christ that strengtheneth me. You know what he's saying? Here's what he's saying in our language. I know how to live when I got money, and I know how to live when I ain't got no money. That's what he was saying. I know how to live when I'm, when I'm up, up here. I know how to walk with God when I'm up here. And I know how to walk with him when I'm down here. You just got to keep walking. You just got to keep and understand that he's adequate. He's got everything under control. 
one more time. Give me just a few more minutes. I'm going to close. Then watch what he said here. But my God, but my God, Philippians 4, 19, shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Are you listening to me? Jesus said, Paul did. He will supply all my need when I when I when I got when I got money that that's okay and but when I ain't got no money it, it's still okay yes, he's still adequate when my bills are paid I like that I don't like it when I can't pay my bills right. don't like it when my when my YouTube when I got a watch for what watch for Southwest coming down the road to cut my power off. I don't like that but you know go hot God is still God he's still God he's adequate he can do all things he can heal your body. He can heal your soul. You that don't know Him, don't have the Holy Ghost, He can feed you with the Holy Ghost. You that are not saved, if there's anyone here tonight that has never repented of your sin, He's a, he's a way maker. He's a way maker. Changes your life. Changes our life into something different. The song told it all. The song told us about it. Don't live like I used to. Why? Because he's a way maker. Don't act like I used to act. You think I'm crazy now. You saw me before I got to church. Man, I was, I was sure enough crazy. Boy, that sister, I mean, I'm better than a fruitcake. Oh, boy. What a difference. What a difference Calvary made in an old boy that's just a plain old redneck. Just a, I mean, come on. I, you know what I used to think a redneck was? I thought a redneck was the man that had a haircut and his neck blister. I thought that's why I called him a redneck. I thought anything that had long hair couldn't be a redneck. I really, I'm serious. I'm serious as a heart attack. Somebody finally told me, no, a, a redneck's an idiot. And I said, oh. God's at it. Who's got a need here tonight? All right. I'm preaching to you about Jesus Christ can do all things. Amen. I'm telling you, Jesus knows right where you're at. Yes, he knows. Uh, he knew. This is going to be kind of funny, but he knew. He knew all about that hand before you cut your fingers off, and he knew good and well you'd still play that guitar. That's right. I, I, can't I can't explain why I'm getting good. But God's attitude. You, we've got to look at God that way. If we don't, we'll go crazy. Yes, He's adequate to help. Yes. To you that are hungry, yes. He's the bread of life. Yes. To you that are thirsty, yes. He's the water of life. Yes. Anybody hear me? Yes. To you that have needs, He's a, a way maker. Yes. Somebody wrote a song. I, I, it's almost there, but I can't get it. I'm talking about a way maker. A way maker. Was that, was that that song that, that uh, they sang at that fun at, at uh, Thane's funeral? Okay, that's good enough for me. A way maker. He's a way maker. Stand with me. Let's lift our hands to Jesus. Come on, Fred. Back up. You were sweetheart. I told you I wasn't going to preach for about 15 minutes. I made went over a little bit. Not much. Hallelujah. How many love him tonight? Oh, what a Savior. What a Savior. If you got a need, some of you raise your hands. If you got a need, bring up to Jesus tonight. Just come on. He's adequate. He's a way maker. Got a situation that you don't know what to do. God's already there. God's already in that situation. If you got a situation, you don't know how to handle it. God knows how to handle it. God knows all about it. Come on, bring it to Jesus tonight. Just bring your burdens. Bring your situation to it. Don't come up here and pray and then go back and worry about it. Leave it all at the feet of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Found our 
Sales worn out from the same old fire. We've all run to things we know just ain't right. But there's a better life. Oh, there's a better life. If you've got pain, he's a pain taker. Prison 
church or how it happened, but he's been coming to church way before there was a, uh, a Mrs. Hall. And, uh, and so, uh, but he just felt his need to be rebaptized, and I'm going to baptize him tonight in the name of Jesus, and uh, God just going to do great things for him in Jesus' name. Pray with the Father in the name of Jesus. God, I ask you to church Brother Scott tonight. God, build a hedge about him and his family. Lord, be with him. God, in this baptism or service, and bless his body, touch that situation in his chest. In Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. Amen.
hands alone. Water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. No other name given among men whereby we must be saved. All that we do in word or deed, do it all in the name of Jesus Christ. And the authority of the one that in Matthew 28, 18 says, All authority in heaven and in earth has been given to me. And then he says, Go therefore, baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That name being Jesus. And that's what we did. In the name of Jesus Christ, all things are possible. There's limits in the world, no limits in the Almighty God. We're here tonight because we feel that the Lord has a special plan and a purpose for you. And we're going to make one last appeal. If you've never been water baptized, I ask you to do that tonight. In the name of Jesus, whatever you're fighting, it can be overcome. The battle can be won in His name. And He can give you the victory. And so the Bible says, repent of your sins. Accept it, believe it, and repent. And then come and be baptized in the beautiful name of Jesus Christ. Now that's what the Bible asked you to do. Be obedient to the Word of God. In Matthew 7, Jesus said in that day, talking about the last day, there will be those that come and say, Lord, Lord, did we not do all these works in your name? And he says, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Those that praised the Lord with their mouth, but their heart was far from God. They worked works, but not the works of God. The Bible says obedience is greater than sacrifice. And so the prayer is that tonight you'll be obedient to the Word of God. And if you've never been obedient in the area of water baptism, that you'll do that in the name of Jesus. And then when you do that, the Bible says that God will fill you with the Holy Ghost if He hasn't already. Because the promise is to you, to your children, to all that are far off, as many as our God shall call. Anyone else that would like to be water baptized in the beautiful name of Jesus tonight? All right, if you would, let's stand together. We're going to pray for each and every one of you. Pastor, is there anything else we need to do this evening? We need to pray for Eli. He has an earache this evening, so we'll pray for him. We'd like to have all of our young, our school-age children, please come. We'd like to pray for you as we do on each Sunday evening. And uh, we'll do that at this time. As we anoint them with all, please, everyone, let's pray together for our young people. Praise the Lord. Let's clap our hands to the Lord Jesus. I believe prayer works. See too many miracles to doubt it. See too many lives transformed to doubt what the Word of God says. Jesus Christ still sets men free. He still changes lives. And thank God that He does. Any other prayer needs? We've got Eli. Do you have an announcement? Go ahead, sister. Go ahead.